Hey everybody, July 24th, uh, about 3.30, I haven't done a video in ages, and uh, getting to the point now where I have a little bit more leeway to be able to do, at least a couple of videos anyway. So what I've been doing is I've been building a wall, yeah, I know, a roof for building a wall, let me tell you. So, let me show you what I've been doing. about a hundred feet to the end it's about 300 feet that pretty straight so what I have is I get another 20 blocks I'm going from where this ends here To just be on the tree. Then I'm going to fill the cavities as best I can. Anyway, try to stiffen up this this wall. And with the help of Joe Souza and Mikey Kalita, I have a jig that I made up to help me pour it by myself. I'll show that to you guys a little later. In the meantime. Let's get set up.
gonna mix us a batch of type N mortar. Probably should have used type S, but it's only a four foot wall, so it's not that big a deal. My tools of the trade. I'll leave my hammer there and clean out the barrel. Give this bad boy a couple of good whacks. I've learned that doing the mix and mortar, it's a lot better to put it in water and slow. If you put it in too thick, too quick, it makes like a slurry on top, and then none of the mortar behind it mixes and it stays dry. You gotta go in there poking it with a stick. So see how it's starting to make little balls, little mortar balls? Sounds like a vegan Italian meatball, doesn't it? Mortar balls. Italian vegan, okay. Oh, there's a stone there. You can tell because of the color. See the, how oh, it's a light gray? And that's, and there's dark. That's just a, that from something that got wet. And the bags are covered, but with the humidity we've had past couple days, I've pulled out huge blocks that next to the bag. I mean, if you get a couple in there, it's not the end of the world. So I just use a cup. I just use a large iced coffee cup. And the other thing I like to do is when it starts to get mixed, I like to uh, level it off a little more. Yeah, I know it has adjustable screws before anybody tells me. But what I do is I just lift it, put this in there like that, and then when I dump it, it falls out. And then I can use the regular, I can use the mortar, the, the, the steeper angle to dump the bag in. 
get everything prepped, start putting water, then I raise it up again. I know I'll use professional masons out there. It's not laughing at me, but I'm a roofer that does masonry. Not a mason that roofs. I just keep pulling. These, if I find them, I pull these stones out. Like I said, it doesn't bother me as I'm spreading the mud around. It's a, there's a clump in there, I just knock it out. It's, it's no big deal. The other thing I like to do too is I have a I have three buckets. I have two water buckets, clean. I just put water in them. And then I have a slot bucket. So what I do is when this mix is done and I dump it in the wheelbarrow, it has a little bit of sludge and stuff on the outside and mortar that's stuck. I'll take some clean water. I'll dump it in slow as it turns just to get it all cleaned up more or less. And then I'll take that clean water that I dumped in there. It's obviously now muddy and I'll dump it into that bucket. And then when I put my next bag in, I always put the, I always put the bag in dry. I dump the water out first that's in the mixer in the slot bucket, put the, put the mortar in, and then I bring, I dump this slop water in slow and then put in the uh, clean water if I need more. And you'll see a little bit of sludge in the bottom from all the mortar settling as it mixes, I'm sorry, as it sits, because I always leave water in the bottom of it. I don't dump it out, I probably should, but I don't dump it out until I'm ready to mix the next batch. You see as it starts to, starting to clump a little bit more together, you're better off adding less water and seeing how it goes and taking an extra few minutes to mix than having to run out and grab some more mortar to uh, dump in there to thicken it up. So. I mean, cement block, the CMU block that I'm using, you want it runny, but you want it to, to be enough to hold its own weight. Because if not, you can put as much mortar as you want on it, and it, when you put the block, it's going gonna, it's gonna to compress and squeeze all the mortar off the side. And that takes three times as long as you take the block back out, add a little bit more, put the block back. If the mortar's good, the blocks are laid out like I did there, these blocks go in fast, nice and easy. Again, I'm going to cover them, I'm going to side them with the uh, vinyl stone siding, so I'm not worried about aesthetics. I know some of them, again, some of the masons out there will be like, oh, you got to tool those joints. Well, I tool them more or less, I'm not worried about it, as long as, as, long as it's uh, smooth. I'm going to ice and water both sides, keep it so no water gets in the block. I don't want to fill all the cavities solid. The reason is, is I don't want water getting in there and in the winter it freezes and when the water freezes it expands and if there's enough water in those cavities or behind the wall it'll if it's in the cavity and it expands it'll blow the cavity out it could potentially blow the cavity out if it's behind the wall it could literally push the wall over because water doesn't compress so ice and water on either side fill it with mortar and fill it with concrete in the middle and I should have a wall for life. Add a little bit more water there. Got one. See, it's starting to mix. If you add water too quick, you don't realize how much water is in there. And then when it finally all mixes together, you get a slop mess. You see that ring on the outside? to the right consistency, it starts to really congeal and really stick together, it'll pull that right off the sides. See, it's getting to the point where it's nearly where I want it. So I'm just going to put a little bit more water. And again, I'm not a mason, I'm a roofer. This is how I like doing it, it works for me. I don't need to put 150 blocks a day. 150 blocks a day, I'd be able to inch, uh, scratch my ankles without bending over. So 
See, it's starting to congeal a little bit better now, but it's not quite where I want it. Now's the point where you gotta be very careful how much water you add. If you add too much, it turns into soup sandwich. I added maybe a half a cup there. Watch the difference. See, it's starting to smooth out. You can see it pulling the shape of the side of the mixer. Not even a half cup. And right there, the outside is smooth, the middle's a little dry, so you gotta give it a minute to mix. Stand to the side, because when a mortar hits the water, it splashes. See? You notice the difference again? What I don't want is I don't want it breaking apart like that. I want it to flow smooth as it rotates. sugar lollipops and stuff same idea just a touch more water and I think that's gonna be pretty much it watch as it mixes in that's and that wasn't even not even a quarter cup of water I could just put in there a different sip you hear that you hear that sound a consistent mixing sound you don't hear flop 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 which I believe is a technical term floppy mortar. The only problem with mixing your own mortar is you got nobody to blame but yourself. This is my brother-in-law Nelson's here. I can yell at him but the mortar's not right. See? Perfect. I'll we'll grab the wheelbarrow and we'll thump her out. I'll see better days. Clean it up. I'm gonna clean the mortar up. Scrap some water. Stump this slow. Batch. It's not perfect, but I'll rinse it out with holes after. And this is the water I'll use when I mix my next batch. Alright, I just extended the line out. You see it's lined up with the face. I try to get the height 
height's what's important to me. See, it's pretty, it's pretty good now. Put the level on it. See, it's not bad. The height's what's important. This way, I'm not overly concerned because I know the row below it's straight. So what I do is when I run the block, I leave it up about an inch. I'll level it front to back, and then I'll drop it to the line. Then I'll look at the face. I'll run the trowel along the face. If it hits, this block is too far out, and I'll tap it in. If it's if I go down and I hit, the block is too far back. I'll tap it forward and adjust it. Um, depending on the thickness in the mortar, sometimes you're better off doing that when you get it to right near, maybe a half inch up above the line. That way when you start tapping it, sometimes the mortar will settle and the block will settle. If you do it too early, you have to pull the block back out, add a little bit of mortar to get it where you need it. So level it more or less, drop it down to within a half inch, level it front to back, and then check your face. And what I did on this side, since I don't have an end, typically I like to do the ends first and then run a line cheek to cheek, but I had to do a double block setup with the with the, the line block. And again, if you look at it, it's pretty straight. I mean, it's not perfect. It's got a little bit of a bow in the middle, but we're not building cabinets. So if this was a finished wall, I'd be a lot more concerned. I'd add more blocks, I'd tighten it up even more, but if it's more or less straight, I'm happy.
right, that mix gave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I usually get between 11 and 13 blocks out of a bag of 80 pound, 90 pound bag of mortar. A um, couple of things I wanted to throw at you. Typically blocks come two-sided. So you have this side, which is rough, and you have this side, which is smooth. And usually they have this contour, whether it's here or whether it's on both ends, that's the top. And when you lay it, you, I usually grab it by the middle with one hand and put the other hand here to guide it, to straighten it out. And what I'll do is I'll slide the block on an angle up against the block so the top touches and then drop the bottom into the mortar. That way it keeps compression on this side, on this joint here. Usually these two ends, the ones with the cutout, goes towards the solid block. All right. The other thing is when you level these blocks, if the block is kicked back, when you tap it down to straighten it out, it's going to kick the bottom away from the line and vice versa. So keep that in mind when you're dropping these lines in. Saturday morning and uh, finished last night, the last, rest of the block. Another, put that other lever in the 12 blocks up and the wall is now the, its final shape. I'm going to run off to get the industrial cement mixer and some more rebar. <laughs>